Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Hello, friends. Merry Christmas and welcome to Episode 2 of the History Revolution Podcast. General George Washington famously crossed the Delaware River on Christmas night, 1776. There is a famous painting depicting the scene. But what led up to that moment, and where was he going anyway? Now, before you start this episode, go to thehistoryrevolution.com slash Trenton for your free podcast companion worksheet. Let's get started. 1776 had been a long year of fighting for the Continental Army. Morale was certainly at a low point after a string of defeats against the most powerful army in the world. General Washington knew that he needed something big in order to boost morale and increase recruitment and retention. He devised a daring plan to sneak across the Delaware River, attack Hessian soldiers at their winter quarters in Trenton, New Jersey. Okay, so who were the Hessians? I thought the Americans were fighting the British. Hessians were German soldiers that had been hired by the British to supplement their own army. A lot of times they were referred to as mercenaries, but that's a little misleading because they weren't individual soldiers for hire. They were actually complete military units under their own command, and they were basically rented to the British by German princes. There were two things that led to this arrangement being possible. Number one, Great Britain was still dealing with massive debt following the French and Indian War. That debt led to increased taxes on the American colonies, which in part led to the American Revolution in the first place. The debt also forced Great Britain to cut costs and decrease the size of their own army. When war was imminent in the American colonies, Great Britain knew that they would have to supplement their own army with hired guns. Number two, Germany in 1776 is not the country that we know today. Germany was actually made up of several smaller feudal states or principalities that were always constantly fighting each other and other European states. This made the German soldiers a fearsome, experienced fighting force. This constant warring was also very expensive to the German states. Those expenses made the German princes willing to rent their armies to Great Britain. The Hessian soldiers were well-respected and feared because of their discipline and experience. Now, in those days, not much fighting usually happened during a war in the winter. The conditions typically didn't allow for it, and most armies would find a good place to hunker down and establish a winter headquarters. British General William Howe, the commander-in-chief of British land forces in the American colonies, chose Trenton, New Jersey, for uh, around 1,400 Hessian soldiers to spend the winter. Again, General George Washington knew that his army needed a spark in order to revive the Patriot cause. His plan called for three divisions totaling 5,400 men to cross the Delaware River under the cover of darkness, assemble on the other side, march 10 miles into Trenton, and attack the unsuspecting Hessians at daybreak. Seems like a great plan, right? According to Winston Churchill, those who plan do better than those who do not plan, even should they rarely stick to their plan. Well, with that being said, nothing went to plan that night for Washington's army. The plan of attack relied heavily on timing, and the timetable was destroyed from the get-go. The three divisions were supposed to meet at their designated crossing points no later than sunset and complete all their crossings by midnight. However, many of the regiments didn't arrive until well after dark. To make things worse, they were hit by a severe winter storm that brought wind, rain, hail, sleet, and snow. This significantly slowed the effort to cross the river. Washington's main force was also delayed by strong river currents and ice in the river. By the time Washington himself crossed the river, they were already more than three hours behind schedule. Unfortunately, the other two divisions didn't even make it across. The conditions were too strong to overcome. So by this time, Washington is way behind schedule, and over half of his army didn't even make it to the party. 
he strongly considered canceling the operation because the element of surprise was seemingly slipping away. Luckily, he decided to push forward. General Washington would later recall, as I was certain there was no making a retreat without being discovered and harassed on repassing the river, I determined to push on at all events. His force of 2,400 men reached Trenton at around 8 a.m., much later than planned. Now, back to the Hessians. You would think that by 8 a.m., the majority of the Hessian soldiers would be up and at them. But remember, this is the day after Christmas. It is also possible that the Hessians stayed up a little too late the night before partying at their Christmas party. Several providential occurrences took place that made the American operation a success. The first was that the Hessians ignored warnings of an impending attack. An unidentified British spy in Washington's camp sent warning to British Major General James Grant that Washington planned to attack soon. Now, Grant didn't believe that Washington would actually attack, but he did send the warning on to Hessian Colonel Carl von Donop who then relayed the message to Hessian Colonel Johann Rall, who was the commander of Trenton. Now, one issue was that Von Donop and Rall despised each other. Another issue was that Rall, along with many of the Hessian commanders, was arrogant. His arrogance is shown in his response when he said, Let them come. Why defenses? We will go at them with bayonets. Rawl had also received warning of the attack from several deserters of the American army. Now, by this time on Christmas Day, Rawl's forces were absolutely tired because the Hessians at Trenton, along with the other Hessian and British forces in the area, were being constantly harassed by local militia. They were on constant high alert and were even commanded to sleep in their uniforms so they would be ready at a moment's notice. Even with this constant harassment, Rawl was confident that if Washington truly sent a full-scale attack, his forces would be able to easily defeat the Americans as they had done time and time before. If the Hessians were on such high alert, how was Washington able to surprise them? No one would have believed that General George Washington would attempt such a daring attack in the storm that hit New Jersey that Christmas night in 1776. The idea of Washington somehow crossing the Delaware River with his army while battling strong currents and ice and strong wind and rain and sleet and hail and snow, it was ridiculous. Once he crossed the river, he would then have to march 10 miles in the snow. After days of being harassed and on constant high alert, the Hessians finally felt relief from the storm. They thought they could finally get some rest and let their guard down. They were wrong. The battle begins. At 8 a.m., General George Washington and the Continental Army began their attack on the Hessians stationed at Trenton. Washington's army formed into three columns and marched through the snow. Banging German drums sounded the alarm. John Stark led his men and entered the city from the west, while Washington and Nathaniel Greene attacked from the north. The Americans quickly swarmed and overwhelmed the Hessians. By 9.30, Trenton was under Washington's control. Almost 1,000 Hessians were captured by the Continental Army, and 22 were killed, including Colonel Johann Rall. Washington came to Rall's side as he lay dying. Rawl asked him to please treat his men with humanity, and of course Washington agreed. Because all of Washington's troops were unable to make it across the river, they were not able to completely prevent the Hessians from escaping, so around 400 were able to escape. The Americans were blessed to only have two soldiers who died and five who were wounded. Among the wounded was future President of the United States, Lieutenant James Monroe. After the battle, General Washington knew that he would be unable to hold Trenton at this time since most of his army and much needed artillery was unable to cross the river. The victory was significant even though they were unable to advance their territory. 
The Continental seized valuable supplies, including muskets, bayonets, swords, and cannons. After gathering the supplies and meeting with his officers, Washington coordinated the effort to get his army back across the river before British reinforcements arrived. However, this would not be the last time that Washington would cross the Delaware River that winter. The Battle of Trenton was also extremely significant in that it proved to the Americans and the British that Washington's ragtag untrained army was becoming a formidable fighting force. Before this victory, Washington was at risk of losing his army. The hope of the Patriot cause was bleak. The American victory at Trenton restored hope and confidence in Washington and the young nation. Friends, thank you again for watching and listening to the History Revolution podcast. Remember, go to thehistoryrevolution.com slash Trenton to get your free podcast companion worksheet. And if you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment and tell us what your favorite part of the episode was. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next week.